there friends, welcome back to Strange Rebel Gaming, I'm Brianna. Today we have a much different video than I have probably ever done. We're gonna be doing a discussion style video about everything we know about The Last of Us 2 and like I promised you, I'm sorry, The Last of Us Part 2. Pardon my French. And of course, I told you guys it was gonna be a collab and that it was gonna be awesome. So here I am with a specialized the Last of Us and Uncharted and all things Naughty Dog and all things awesome YouTuber Nick A30. Thank you. I am Nick A30. Hello, everyone. Uh, I guess we're going to be talking about The Last of Us Part 2, as Brianna just said. So without further ado, we should probably just jump. Okay, right but first I got to ask you one question, my friend. All right, go for it. Where did the username come from? So Nick obviously is my name. Uh, A, is it? Can, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then A, because I'm Canadian, so that kind of like adds on to it. And it's also the last name initial of uh, my name. Nice. So kind of like a little pun right there with the E-H, A for Canadian. Uh, and then the 30 was my first football jersey number. So that is about it. Love it. Love it. He's Canadian, guys. Can you tell? <laughs> you really won't be able to tell <laughs> until he says the word out. <laughs> out? Uh, a boat? Uh, no, I don't. I'm trying too hard here. No, I actually, I feel like I don't have an accent when I say a boat. I don't know. Do I? You do. I but that—that that is okay. the only vowel sound that you do have an accent. Everything yeah. else you sound. So a lot of people say, yeah. I'm very excited. We have a lot to talk about. Let me see if I can pull up my notes here. Um, right. So this is actually the second time that we've popped on a call together. And uh, the whole idea was we absolutely wanted to talk about so many different things because there is so much to talk about. Um, Even with only two trailers released. I know, but it, it, it isn't really just two trailers, right? Yeah. It's not just two trailers. It's, it's two trailers, two posters, Three three posters? Three I, I think... three posters, two outbreak days, right? Oh, that's right, that's right. I forgot about the outbreak days. And yeah. then, and and then, then the one on Uncharted Four. Right, the American uh, Daughters. The and then there's, you know, other stuff that's considered canon but isn't necessarily like within the first The Last of Us game. Yeah. The first it's... The Last of Us game. We have all this stuff, but it could change. These trailers? Oh, cause, yeah. Because I, I know the first one, I think Neil Druckmann in the interview afterwards, he said that you know, things could change. Especially when we get into talking about maybe how close they are to having a completed product because we're going to be talking about the release date between the two of us today. Uh, on Laura Bailey's IMDB page. So, yeah. Where, it, what? Yeah, it comes up as a 2018 game. So they've almost built a movement engine around Laura Bailey. Clickers become clickers after two to four years of becoming infected. So let's talk about the timeline. Let's just assume that it's Anna. It could be a flashback. A lot of people want to know, me included, what exactly happened. With this story of hate, it can go one of two ways for me. I think that that Anna's story, I think that it's clear that Ellie's story is one of hate. And I think it's connected to her mother, but is Anna's story a story of hate as well? And how far will that take the both of them? And will it be taking them together? Because I if, if, in my opinion, I want to see Anna alive, I haven't, we can obviously go through arguments, pro, con, debate of which is which, but I personally think that she, she is. I think that's the stronger story choice. And yeah. I think that she, and I just love the idea of this, this tragic irony of Anna being alive the entire time yeah but then dying right when ellie starts to get to know her i uh, love the idea yeah. and that that sort it's... of came to me last night while i was thinking about the theseus theory maybe the theseus theory because the theseus theory is you know a greek tragedy it's it's a right. it's a greek tragedy and it always has that sense of irony of like everything would have been fine if just this one little thing and now it now everybody's life is ruined because of this just one little thing and it's so yeah sad and tragic because it didn't have to be that way but then it was and then like that's life and what's the lesson to be learned and I think that seeing if if you just take the Theseus theory and apply it towards Anna instead of Joel and then instead of Joel dying Anna dies oh god this is such good stuff yeah 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 but I the think thing there's is something there I haven't fleshed it out fully but I think there's something there the thing is, though, Naughty Dog is known for never killing off their main characters. They kill off the villains, of course, the main character villains, but they, in Uncharted or any other game they've yeah. done, even The Last of Us, they have not killed off 
you know the main character like Joel sure. and Ellie. And would would they want to get uh, like you know piss off their their fans in a way because there's potential for a, a another sequel after or like you know a third game after sure. this. So why would they want to just cut that off and stop it? So you know, and uh, and even the idea of like. So, so even earlier, I mentioned how Laura Bailey was Nadine Ross. They yeah. they used her specifically, I think, to inform The Last of Us Two, which makes me yeah. think that not only will Anna be a playable character, I think that she will be a huge, huge oh, yeah. part of the story. And if she does die, we're still going to see her throughout the game. Whether she dies early on, and then we see flashbacks of when she was alive throughout the game and get to play as her throughout the game, or right. she stays alive throughout the game and then there's a tragic death of her at the end, I don't know. But I don't think that she's just gonna get killed off early on and then we never see her again, because why would they have built the entire story around her at that point? You know right, what I mean? Right. I think as yeah. a character, as an actress, she's involved in a in a bigger way than just like at the beginning and then dies. Yeah, um, I kind of want to go back to another point you mentioned. Um, sure. There was something, you said like parallel themes in the timeline. So, you know, is Anna going to go on that path of destruction as well? Um, it's kind of funny that you mentioned that because you know, there there was two Outbreak Day theme posters. So yes. there was one uh, with the hammer and then one with the uh, the knife, which supposedly was Ellie's knife. And the knife that Ellie got, yes. it was given to her by Anna. Yes. So that's the thing. So when we see this one, it's very light and bright and very contrasting, very different and opposite, polar opposite. Yeah. But I do also find it very interesting that you're saying that Outbreak Day poster one was pretty obviously Ellie with a reference to Anna's knife. And then Outbreak Day poster two has now pretty clearly been revealed to be the hammer with yeah. with Ellie's mom holding it. I think that the duality of that yeah. cannot be ignored. Exactly. I think that's a yeah. really good point. Thank you. Um, and there was also one other thing. Uh, you know, I totally lost my train of thought. I totally did. That's okay. Um, we have we have yeah. notes to refer to. Let's. That's let's, right. Let's ask some <laughs> questions. Uh, so right. we talked about we talked about the timeline. We talked about the release date, and it's interesting that as you and I have been talking, hmm. I, I think we're both convinced it's Anna. I think I honestly, yeah, I think it is. I mean, you never know. Not that could pull Anna. a complete 180. I, <laughs> I think I, we're gonna find out, like at PSX, because they're doing the panel, and I feel like they're gonna right. So we want to we want to save PSX predictions for the end for sure. Okay. Um, okay. but I I definitely I definitely think that both of us are convinced it's Anna. Yeah. I, oh, yeah. I want that not to be true. Trust me, I do. Because Who you know me, them? you yeah. and I were talking, like I want to I want to think up things that other people haven't already said. But yeah. with every single single breadcrumb, whether it be the American Daughters poster where someone with long hair is pregnant, so I don't think it's Ellie, I think it's Anna. I think the American Daughters poster is Anna. Yeah. And I also find it interesting that there's a revolver in the poster and revolver was brought into the second trailer, even though it's not technically Anna holding it. Mm -hmm. I think that I think that with the American Daughters poster and the four letter name and the fact that Laura Bailey is playing her and also played Nadine Ross, I just all of the breadcrumbs are telling me Lead like up. and then you're talking about the outbreak day poster and like really the loop that's that's left the most open with The Last of Us 1 is the idea of immunity. And and the fact that, that parenthood is one of the absolute core, core ideals in The Last of Us 1, and it can't not be brought into The Last of Us 2, Part 2, I definitely think with all of those breadcrumbs put together, it cannot not be Anna. Right. That's what yeah. I'm thinking. So there's two more things that we really need to hit. And, and one of them is this Ellie's tattoo situation from the first trailer because I never really, yeah. I, I, I sort of found that I took that for granted. And it was just like, okay, cool, Ellie has a tattoo now. But like there's something there that I just never fully sussed out. And then the yeah. other thing, before we're done, I think we need to touch on the religious culty symbolism in Absolutely. the second trailer. Yeah. So I guess going off of Ellie's tattoo, the first yeah. thing that everyone always asked was, first of all, how did she get the tattoo in the post-apocalyptic world? Who did exactly. it for her? Exactly. Like, where did that come from? <laughs> yeah. I got to know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But that's besides the point. And another thing is, we were talking about the scar earlier and how it kind of symbolizes 
everything she's been through. And this you know, is she the got scar it. from when she was bitten during yeah. Left Behind, the DLC for The Last of Us, with Riley. And when they her both, best friend they, dies. They both got bit, and then um, Riley died, and Ellie didn't. Yeah, so... and, to, and, and as we were mentioning earlier, how a scar stays with you for life and all those memories. And for Ellie to kind of just cover that over and... I guess not even care. Well, I, I don't really know how to say it, but does that represent that she's going to be this new change woman who doesn't care about Riley, who doesn't care about anything of her past and is just completely going on a path of vengeance? Who knows? But you know, it's, it's definitely something to look into. We had talked about the Outbreak Day poster, right? And you yeah. were the first one to say it, it feels light. It feels airy. There's There's moths. You know, they're not butterflies, but they're still flying winged kind of whimsical creatures and then there's yeah. not just like it's not just like ivy it's like a fern and yeah. ferns are delicate and they're found in lush forests you know they're 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 beautiful and 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 definitely have a whimsy about them so i right. i don't look at the tattoo of a moth and the fern i don't look at that and go oh, well, that symbolizes Ellie's hatred. That symbolizes Ellie's turning into a worse person. I see that as Ellie. And uh, in my Theseus Theory video, I talked about how someone mentioned that it, it looks like a Cyclops moth. Moths represent rebirth, right? right? Because moths still have chrysalises just like butterflies do, and they, they start in caterpillar form. And I think that the, the moth symbolizing rebirth is, is, and then the fern representing like growth, and, and freshness, you know, forestry, lushness almost. I, I think yeah. that there's something, I think that the tattoo to me has good connotations, not negative connotations. Right, but I absolutely. also think that it's a sign to put it over her scar of healing. Yeah. I think it's not a sign of I'm still angry that I couldn't save the world. Oh. I see it as I've healed over the fact that I can't save the world. Oh, she's kind of accepted that and she doesn't have that survivor's guilt anymore and she's moved on with her life. She's not angry at Joel, maybe, or something like I like that. That's a very good, great interpretation. I like that a lot. <laughs> That's what That's I'm good. seeing, personally. Yeah, oh, absolutely. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So I guess we could lead into the uh, religious connotation. Second trailer now, if, that, if you're okay with that. Yeah. yeah. All right. So that is something that's pretty, pretty overt. Yeah. You know, it's it's no joke. Like like it's culty. <laughs> it's religious. <laughs> yeah. and, and as someone who who grew up very familiar with religion, I, my I grew up Catholic, and the it was the first thing I latched onto was I call her Braid Lady in my notes, but her name's Emily, <laughs> right? Yeah, Emily. Emily, sure, we'll call her Emily, but I call her Braid Lady. Uh, <laughs> even though they kind of all have braids. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> even even Anna has a braid. Um, mm. So so Emily says, and they are nested with sin. Oh. She doesn't, she says and to start a sentence. True. And she uses the term nested and she uses the term sin. It's, it's the first thing I did was look up if that's from a Bible passage. And I right. couldn't find anything. That doesn't mean it's not there. Yeah. It just means I couldn't find it. Um, it also means it could not be there. It could not be in the Bible. It could be their own theology. But it still follows the same intonation and grammatical structure that you hear a lot in, in religious terminologies um, or in religious sermons. You know, it, it starts with a... And blah, 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 came onto the earth and said, <laughs> blah, blah, yeah, blah, blah, yeah, blah, yeah. blah, blah, right? So it's, yeah. it's like, it's, it's very religious, even though it doesn't have any direct relation to, in my experience, Catholicism, um, or isn't a direct quote from the Bible, which is what I thought it was originally, and I wanted to look it up, but I, I couldn't find anything. Yeah. Um, so she says, and they are nested with sin, breathe in so that they may know my and then she gets cut off. So that whole thing uh -huh. relates to, and especially the breathe in and the idea of like religious will will absolve you of religion will absolve you of your sins, uh -huh. um, and and breathe in my my uh, resolution for you, or breathe in my 
godliness or, or holiness or whatever. I, I sort of get this feeling that like that she was was that this Emily character is part of a religious cult that is that is aiming to cleanse the world. I don't but- know what the whole like nested with sin. I, I think that when I he when I hear that, I think rat's nest. I don't uh-huh. think pregnancy. I think nested as in like that's a evil terminology. They are nested with it. Like they are right. they're not yeah. only in bed with it, but they live with it, they breathe it, they 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 nest in it, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um and so I, I think that that's, that's less to do with pregnancy than everybody indicates. I also think that I look at the man above them who's disemboweled. They're, yeah. they're all disemboweled. Exactly. It's not a pregnancy thing. So it's not thing. specific to pregnant women or anything like that. No. I just and think it's... that she went against the cult in some other way. But it kind of begs the question, like, kind of back to the timeline thing, like, could a world... So let's say this is only a few years after the outbreak, because, you know, we're going way back, because if we're looking at yes. Anna, she was obviously Ellie's mom, so it's going to be way back. Now, could this type of religious, you know, very uh, serious behavior, or you know what I mean? Could that have arisen within just two years, or I'm you know, a few say, years? Like, would the world go that crazy? And I'm gonna say the- yes. the The world can go got, can go that crazy within two years. Yes. Yeah. But I don't think specifically that it did. And here's here's what I'm thinking. My reason okay. for thinking that this wasn't two years after the outbreak is because when people are scared, terrified, in terrible, terrifying situations, they pull upon what they know. They don't right. create something new. And so this this new theology that doesn't necess- that has terms similar to biblical or christian terms like yeah. angels demons which demons is is a direct word that's mentioned apostates yeah. but they don't use any direct bible quotes which makes me think it's enough time that it's evolved from any known religion oh, and they're their okay. own theology okay. does that make right. sense and yeah, i know yeah, yeah. because demons were mentioned in the trailer and it's- the reason, like, they say demons, that kind of leads me to believe that maybe they didn't have these names of clickers yet. Maybe it was early on. So, but then again, like, what you're saying could kind of lead to the opposite. Could be conclusion. later. So it could be yeah, later on. Yeah, like, way, way later. That's true. Um, and, and it's also, also mentioned... possible that, that you know, there will, and, and this is something that comes up in The Walking Dead a lot, which I know right. is very different, very different. Yeah. But but what is true is that there is this one um, idea that you come across bands of people who have isolated themselves. Right. When the world went to, maybe they were a cult before the outbreak. The outbreak and- happens and they isolate themselves from the outside world to protect them and that's how they survive but they also don't have any contact with the outside world calling them clickers or infected or bloaters they that's... could just call them demons and the world has gone to hell and yeah. and we are the only ones who can save the world because we have point. to cleanse it with our religiousness yeah you know, they even like do that in the last of us one like we see david's group he are here yes. he's the cannibals they're their own separate group and they have their own set of rules and david's the leader we also yes. look at the fireflies we have marlene you know so I, I definitely know what you mean and then there's like bandits who raided them in pittsburgh and yeah uh there's also another line that they say uh clip her wings and yeah. i remember when we were discussing you thought something completely different which is really cool like when i think of wings i think of i think it was like fireflies everybody or keeps bringing up the whole fireflies idea because yeah. yeah. she must be a firefly clip her wings instantly yeah. i i had no thought that this could be a firefly clip her wings is a direct a du- oh hello excuse me <laughs> <laughs> hello <laughs> Say hello. So <laughs> ah, ah, don't eat that. Ah, ah. Say What's his hi. name? Hi. Her name is Atari. Oh, her. Oh. Yeah, hi, and like she's it. a cutie patootsie, and she's being good right now because <laughs> she just woke up from a nap. Yeah. Um. Okay. So, so, are you gonna sit in my lap, or are you gonna go down? You're gonna sit for a second. Okay. So, clip her wings to me instantly means angel. That Ange- that was something that was like wings. wow. I didn't think of I, that. I never thought Firefly. You know, I heard them say demons. I watched the trailer again and I was like, oh, she's saying clip her wings <laughs> because she's not an angel anymore. She's an apostate now. 
She right. was part of the cult. She was an angel, but now she's not. So clip her wings. Yeah, that's actually very good. Very good that's, point. That's the only, that's instantly what I thought. Yeah, that's... So when I first saw the trailer, I mean, my first thought was everybody but the henchmen, henchmen's, henchmans, hench, <laughs> hench people um, were, yeah. were all female. I looked at right. Yara and Anna and Emily and then Lev came in and I thought androgynous female, but it actually turns out that it's played by a male actor and I'm seeing a few things online that say uh, a trans actor. I just don't know. I haven't confirmed that, and I can't find a preferred pronouns anywhere. So I'm just going to go ahead and refer to them as they, them. Okay. Hopefully that, that's, that's the best that my uh, limited knowledge can do as yeah. far as not being so... Um, hopefully not being offensive or ignorant or anything like that. Uh, yeah, what so, I wanted to mention, basically when Lev does come into the scene yes. in the second trailer, uh, we basically, you know... Anna's hanging and she's about to die. She's literally on her deathbed. And the first thing that Lev does is just kind of brush it aside completely. Doesn't even like look at it as if it's a big deal. It's almost I like almost, a normal sight to I her. almost see them flash eyes to Anna, double check. Mm. Okay, it's not Yara. I only care about Yara. Moving yeah. on, where's Yara? And then like looks at Yara. Yeah, exactly. And it could go back to the discussion of, you know, how they were the kids are kind of born into this world. So they're kind yes. of used to seeing it and they, they know exactly how to handle it. I, I don't really know. But I thought it was worth uh, worthwhile to mention. Yeah, and, uh, it's there's so many interesting moments in the second trailer, and you know you can break it down bit by bit by bit by bit, and it still yeah. doesn't answer enough questions. So just mm -hmm. a small little smattering sample of some of the questions that that I had were were ne are, that are never going to be answered until we play the game. Uh, yeah. What was Yara doing before this scene? Why was yeah. she brought in? Because all Emily does is whistle, right? Or is right. the whistle... No, there's a whistle in the distance. I... So whose whistle is that? Who whistles? Is it Yara whistling? And who's she signaling to? Is someone else whistling that I see in apostate and Yara's brought in? Who, what, what, who's the whistler, right? <laughs> and then if Yara and Lev are on the same team and Anna is not with them, why would Yara save her life? Why would Yara be like, spare her? Because it's not, you can't just assume it's because Anna helps kill Emily. You can't just assume that. Maybe it was because the infected were coming, so they needed help because all they ran out they of They hadn't I, heard yeah. it at that point. They hadn't That's heard the point. crack. So That's I'm thinking that there's something that happens in the scene before where Yara and Anna meet. And Anna gets picked up. Anna gets, you know, almost disemboweled. And Yara's off in the distance saying, how can I save her? And then gets whistled or whatever, yeah, caught by yeah. the henchmen. And, and I don't know how Lev ties into it because Lev was obviously outside of the scene and not in the know about Anna at all. So right. there's also, um, was Anna's conflict separate? from Yara and Lev's conflict, or was it the same? Was it the same conflict? Was Anna, is Anna's not dressed like them? Is Anna not an apostate? Was she not ever part of the cult? Whereas are Yara, is it, can it, can it be assumed that Yara, I think it can be assumed that Yara was part of the cult, but yeah. when, when Emily says, where is the other apostate? Or where are the other, does she say multiple apostates? I think she says multiple, I'm pretty sure. I, in my notes, it says, where is the other apostate? That only means oh, one other. other. One, okay. So that would indicate maybe Lev was the other apostate. Right. And Anna never was. But, but it also, just taking a step back from all of this, like, why were they looking for, like, what do you think they did wrong? Or what, what was their goal? So say they do have a religious group. What are they trying yes. to do? Well, Why are they from, disemboweling people? From my theory, like I told you, they're trying to cleanse yeah. the world of sin. Because uh, that's a very okay. religious motive. They, yeah. they believe that Satan has come to take over the world and that it is their uh, job through their belief system, whatever that belief system is, to, yeah. to cleanse the world. Right. To cleanse the sin. Yeah. And, and the only way to do it is to disembowel sinners. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Who knows? It's uh, not rational. It's obviously not rational. Absolutely not. No. Uh, so there was, I think, uh, I mean, I guess that's all really. There was one other thing I wanted to mention from the first trailer. If you want to transition to that topic or anything else we want to discuss about the second trailer. 
Hey, we're going back and forth and upside down and in and out and outbreak days. Let's, <laughs> let's bring it all yeah, so, in. So just a small point uh, in the first trailer. When Ellie's singing, and, you know, obviously the song has meaning. Naughty Dog picked reason. When yeah. she sings the line, goodness and mercy will something, something, I think, like, save me or, or something along those lines, we see the camera pants over to Joel. It's almost as if, uh, you know, it's got to, it can't just be a coincidence. Or, like, I honestly don't know, but it's got to foreshadow the roles of what Joel is going to play. You know, Maybe. we're going back to the thing of Ellie, you know, going on this, like, vengeance path where Joel is the the light figure, the the father figure kind of thing. Right when she sings the line, goodness and mercy, uh, Joel appears. It cuts to Joel. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. Joel and her and Joel's story, and this is sort of coming from Druckmann, ha, ha, is about how far love can take you and how many obstacles you can overcome for love. Mm-hmm. Parental love, but love. Yeah, yeah. Now that we have Anna entering the picture, and Anna clearly, maybe not clearly, but with the hammer and then all of the red and the fire and the, the violence yeah. that she has been inducted into the story so far for us with i sort of feel like maybe her story represents hate and love story oh. represents joel and then here you have ellie stuck in the middle going which is my path which is the path oh. for me <laughs> i like that yes that's a good interpretation you know? who knows you never know absolutely um that's actually a really good point. I never really thought of it like that. I always thought of, you know, we're looking at just two paths here, just Ellie and Joel and then, uh, you know, Anna kind of on her path. But to see Ellie and in the middle, maybe like choosing or, you know what I mean? That's a really good point. I like that. Because there's this whole idea of if Joel, Joel's path represents love and Anna's path represents hate. You know, we talked about earlier mm-hmm. how you have Joel coming in to Ellie saying, or well, Joel is the one that first says, you sure you want to go through with this? And Ellie is the one that says, I'm going to find and I'm going to kill every last one of them. And yeah. that's Joel sort of saying, like, I disagree with your choice to go on this path of vengeance. I understand. I'm here with you, obviously, but I disagree. And so if this path of vengeance has to do with Anna, which a lot of people think that it does, because yeah. if the tattoo represents... It's not about survival. If not, it's not a story about survival guilt. It's not a story about immunity anymore. Then it has to be about something else. And if right. her story of hate is related to Anna and the the bad that Anna has given to the world, then then there's something about Joel being like, "Are you sure?" And, yeah, and, <laughs> and then that leverage- that gives Ellie the choice. That that puts Ellie in a position to have to choose and to have to and- learn the lesson. Yeah, and it's her choice. Like what you said earlier, the, the way he says it, it's almost as if, you know, Ellie has grown up now and Joel is saying that. Are you sure you want to go through this? But he knows there's nothing he can do to stop her, even if he thinks it's the wrong choice. And it has so, to be her arc. You know, in yeah. theory, the, the game might open with Ellie playing guitar, having murdered all these people. The game might yeah. open there with her taking this path of vengeance and hate and murder. And then yeah. by the end of it, she might have you know, maybe something, and this is where I'm coming to this idea of like, she has to have a character arc and it has to do with her growing up and becoming independent because she's not a kid anymore. And if it starts with hate, then it eventually has to come back to the ending of love. And how does that happen? I don't necessarily see like them going on some epic journey and at the end, Ellie's like, well, I sure learned my lesson. Shucks. <laughs> I don't see that happening, yeah, but I no. sure do see Yeah. I sure do see Ellie learning her lesson through the tragedy of losing yeah. someone she loves. And whether that's Joel or whether that's Anna, it's Ellie has to be forced to yeah. see the lesson see, of what hate brings to the yeah, world. I could definitely see it like Anna dying or someone of that nature, but I can't see Joel because like I said, when we think of The Last of Us, we think of Joel and Ellie, right? Those are the two characters that we like. Like, if we were playing The Last of Us with Ricky Bobby and Billy Bob Joe, like, in a sequel, no one would want to, no one would want to buy that. The reason that we play it is I feel like the characters now, we've, come emotion- we've become emotionally attached to them. And So you're you know, right in that Naughty Dog doesn't have a tendency to kill off characters. Yeah. You're right. Would but... they go against the green and change it? 
The Last of Us goes against the grain. That's what it does. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. what it does for game design, for storytelling. It's what it does for that studio because Uncharted is the exact opposite, right? Uncharted is happy ending at the end every time yeah, for everybody. Every time. Yeah, and yeah, The yeah. Last of Us isn't that. The Last of Us is decidedly not that. And especially if it's a story about hate, there has to be some sacrifice for there to be a message that hate doesn't win. And I don't right. think that Druckmann would be a part of something that says hate wins. So I think in the end, so. hate has to has to create a major sacrifice. Now, here's one more point. Okay, okay. You're saying that Naughty Dog doesn't kill off its characters. Okay. <laughs> but you're talking about the potential for more sequels down the road. Yeah. Wouldn't you? So you're thinking it could end at The Last of Us Part Two. That's it. Wouldn't? No, no, no. Oh, okay, okay. Wouldn't you make... Ellie, the playable character, if you knew Joel wouldn't be around for the next game? Because then Ellie I mean, would carry on. Option, right? yeah. Ellie would carry on the series. You know, you look at Uncharted 4, they didn't kill off Nathan, but Nathan's not a character anymore. Who did they bring back? They brought back Nadine point. from Uncharted 4, they brought back Sam from Uncharted 4, and they brought in Chloe from yeah. Uncharted 2. Yeah, and if they're c- c- going to continue it like later on, it might even be Nathan Drake's daughter now. But yeah, you're right. Nathan Drake and is And Nathan and now. Elena are not in the series anymore. So I don't see it as an... Well, if they kill off Joel, they can't make it The Last of Us another game. That's not true. <laughs> they okay, can. so we're, we're going to go on record here. It is now the date 2020. We have just beat The Last of Us Part 2. We are coming back to this video, and we are going to see if Brie is right in her prediction. What does she predict? Joel is dying at the end of The Last of Us Part 2? There better be comments in the year I 2020. Said, I said either Joel or Anna. I said okay. either or. Okay. I said there has either to Joel be or Anna. some We're gonna... major sacrifice to show right. that hate is not the I, path. I, I like it, though. Yeah, that's a very good theme, too, as well. You never know. I, I feel like that's a really good point. They could do that. It's gotta. Yeah. It's gotta. We should have been live streaming this. I would have loved to see people spamming the chat right now. I would have died to see that. We should have yeah. been live streaming this. Yeah. Um, I guess like yeah. the only logical thing uh, to end it now would be to talk about PSX then and see yeah. what we're going to see. Yeah. I personally think um, we're not going to get a new trailer or a new gameplay or anything like that. I think because when they first announced that Naughty Dog would be at PSX, they talked about Uncharted and the anniversary. And then and later have on... a panel for Uncharted. Yeah, later on, they mentioned a panel for The Last of Us Part Two, so it's just tacked on. I feel like the main priority will be Uncharted. But then again, they, they do have the actor, the actors and actresses playing, uh, you know, Anna and all that stuff on the panel. So I feel like we'll get some kind of small information, such as who is uh, Laura Bailey playing. It's going to be yeah. probably Anna. But I don't think we're going to get any kind of gameplay or new trailers. I think they're going to save that for next year. And then if we don't, does that like go to tell you how far along development they are? Maybe they're not far along at all. Because I remember when The Last of Us came out or before it came out, we had so many trailers, so many gameplay. And like, yeah, with only two trailers now, does that tell us how far along development they are? I don't know. So what are, what are your thoughts on what we're getting at PSX? Well, I mean, you already know my thoughts on how far along they are in development. It yeah, we... could it could be that they didn't spend, you know, maybe they were just kind of working on story and con- because it let's say let's for argument's sake say that, you know, un- during the development of Uncharted 4, The Last of Us 2 was really only in preliminary development. Right. But once the story for Uncharted 4 is written, Mm-hmm. That's when they can go through and do gameplay and then eventually, you know, uh, animations and quality assurance and fine tuning and all that. But the writing team doesn't really have anything to do after that because it's already That's written. True. The the, the yeah. script comes first, right? The script is the yeah. first thing that gets done. I mean, it gets tweaked here and there, but, yeah. but the writer, the writing staff at Naughty Dog, like that's like, they're done after Uncharted 4. Yeah. And, you know, Uncharted 4 came out last year. And so, we had, like, as, sorry to cut you off, but as you mentioned, we, we had that poster of Uncharted 4. So they knew where they were going. So maybe the story was done at that point. So, yeah. I, I think by the time Uncharted 4 was released, the story was already done for, you know, the, yeah. maybe not done. But I knew, that I, I'm pretty sure they had, they had the bones of the story. Maybe not dialogue, but, like, they had the bones of the story. They had some concept art. You know, they had the concept art that was revealed at PSX 
last year in 2016, I think that was yeah. for sure. I think that was for sure done um, by the time Uncharted 4 came out. Um, so I think that they're probably more than halfway done through the development or we wouldn't be seeing what we're seeing. Last trailer that we got was so intensely cinematic and it was said that it was done in the engine. So right. they, they at least the engine improvements must be as good as they're probably going to get. So at the very right. least, they're, they're, they're probably pretty far through production. You know what yeah. I mean? So, yeah, oh, so that kind of stuff is probably done. Um, and I, I'm thinking, I'm thinking they're more than halfway through production, which still, still, I'm saying 2019 release date. That's my right. opinion. <laughs> we might. Are they going to? Oh, that's tough. All right, yeah. I want to, I, I want to say a statement and then ask a question. I think for okay. sure we're going to get the reveal of who Laura Bailey's playing because she's going to be there uh, and she's going to talk about her role. 100%. I think I think that's a given. We're going to yep. find out who she is. This whole conversation maybe is going to be completely useless because maybe she's not even Anna. I don't know. Maybe she's yeah. she's actually an Ally or whatever, <laughs> some other four letter woman name. I don't know. Yeah. Um. So who knows? But but I figure we're going to find out exactly who Laura Bailey plays, and yep. she's going to talk about her role. Um. I don't know if we're going to get necessarily gameplay as we are going to get just talking about gameplay with maybe like the concept art in the trailers that we've already seen playing yeah. on in the background. Kind of, um, yeah. And then I also have a question. Are we getting a release date at PSX? You know, I want to say no because Naughty Dog has learned from the past. Look at Uncharted 4. Uh -huh. It was supposed to be coming out in like February or something. They postponed it to March and they postponed it to April and all that stuff. So I think they've learned, you know, it's always good to say you're going to get something done within like, let's say, you know, five years and actually deliver on that date or release it earlier as opposed to saying you're going to get it done and post it in two years, but then like make it so it's, you know, five years actually like later. Well, because and then at that point, we kind of even have to talk about the nature of of delaying games. Right. Why why is it pretty standard at this point for game devs to promise something in a certain time and not deliver it in that time? It's yeah. at this point expected for all right. big titles to be delayed at least a few months, if not yeah. more. And I and, first of all that pisses me off beyond yeah. all belief. I don't know if it's a marketing scheme, I don't know if it's just bad time management or yeah. if it's just a manipulation plot to a get people to pre-order it or b get their team to work harder and work overtime because well we right. have to get it done by 2018 in november yeah. so yeah. they have reason to work their staff because you know especially at naughty dog they have a really huge problem with crunch times and yeah. overtimes and overworking people that's a huge i mean it's a huge like like workers rights kind of problem in my opinion yeah. But, but it's just standard in the game industry. And so why do that? Like, why not get some, like, reasonable people with some reasonable dates and say, why don't you work a little bit of overtime every month for the next five years instead of working 80 hours overtime in one month? And then, well, it's not quite finished yet, so we got to work 80 more hours overtime <laughs> the next month and then yeah. another month. And that's ridiculous. Yeah. That's absolutely ridiculous. And you ridiculous. think, like, they're Naughty Dog, AAA title, you think they'd have it all figured out by now after how many games have they released? Uncharted 1, 2, 3, you know, Crash Bandicoot, all those nope. games. And, nope. You know, it's still... But, I, yeah, I, I don't know if they will give a release date. That's a good thing that you mentioned, actually, but... But, yeah, but why I'm, not? Why wouldn't they give us a release date? Mm, why wouldn't just, they? Because they're right. not going to stick to it anyway. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They're just going to delay it. So why not say November 2018, right before the holidays? Everybody goes, oh my God, November 2018, pre-order, 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 right? And maybe that's yeah. why, that's another thing that I didn't bring up about the GameStop catalog, right? The GameStop catalog might have listed the last oh, as part a pre -order. two as a pre-order for to 2018. Make money. Yeah. So it could be totally irre irrelevant, all these 2018 dates that we see. Just, yeah, and it's kind of, you kind of see that on Amazon, you know, a placeholder date they put at the end of the year. Good point. That's a really good point. <laughs> it's tricky. It's tricky. I think Anna's identity is going to get released. I mean, Anna's 100%. identity. I think Laura Bailey's identity is going to get released. Yeah. And I think it's going to be Anna. <laughs> and I think we're going to get a release date. Okay. Interesting. All right. I'm and gonna I, have think, to... I think we'll get one or I think we'll get one more good clue 
via concept art. I don't think we're going to get a trailer. I, uh, uh, I don't. I hope we do. Yeah. I don't think we are. I hope we do. I don't think we are. But I, I, I think we're going to get some new concept art. Definitely. I think what they're going to they're gonna do the same kind of thing as at the last panel when they first yeah. showed off the last of two. Just a panel. They're going to be talking about it and showing concept art, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, I don't know about the release. I don't think so because when you look at the last of us two, last of us one when, when mm -hmm. it got um a release date announced i'm not i think they had a lot of trailers released i'm not sure how many but i know they had a gameplay release out they had this other stuff like trailers and just one of the, the most important thing gameplay i feel like gameplay really shows that they're far along development and we haven't gotten that yet so i i don't Although know i personally think we have gotten that in the lost legacy i think we have really? gotten a, a sample of the Last of Us 2's Good. gameplay and playing The Lost Legacy. Good point, yeah. That That's dual actually... combat is so much more improved over Uncharted mm. 4. And, you yeah. know, they introduced it in Uncharted 4, but they really fine-tuned it in yeah. in The Lost Legacy. Like, it's, it's, it's fun to play two characters in The Lost Legacy, and I think it's going to be very similar in The Last of Us 2. Yeah. Yeah, I can't wait. Oh, it's going to be great. I'm just getting all excited thinking it's going to be great. I cannot wait for it to release. You know what? Uh... That being said... Mm -hmm. If if I truly believe that the last or that the the lost legacy uh -huh. is a little sampler of the gameplay of The Last of Us Two, why wouldn't they drop a gameplay trailer? If they if they if I mm -hmm. they might have it. They might you have think? it. I don't know. I I don't okay, know. Okay, okay. I'm gonna go bold <laughs> with my predictions here. I'm gonna okay. say. Laid we're gonna get the table. we're gonna get the Laura Bailey reveal. We're gonna get a release date, and we're gonna get gameplay. Ooh, I am not going with that. I am just saying we are gonna know who Laura Bailey is. We're gonna see some concept art, gameplay, no release date. I mean, no gameplay. Sorry, no, uh, just concept art of like you know pictures and all that stuff. Uh, no release date and no gameplay. Okay. And no, no more trailers. So okay. I guess um that is a great way to wrap it up. Is that all? Yeah. I think so. That this has been an hour and thirty-five minutes of yeah <laughs> of um, the Last of Us Two talking. <laughs> great having me. Uh, thank you so much for having me, Bree. Oh, thank you for time. having me. And yeah, we'll definitely have to do it in the future if once we get more info or something. Uh, it was a lot of fun. I have a f are, okay. Let me ask you a question. Are you going to be live streaming PSX? Uh, you know, I was actually thinking about it, but I'm not sure. Would it be a good idea? I definitely, see, I'd live stream it if I knew 100% if we were getting a gameplay trailer or something, but I'm not sure, because, you know, I kind of think that we aren't, so. What about you? I'm busy. Okay. So I can't. I would, but I I literally cannot. Yeah. So I have plans, but, you mm. know, uh, I think we should talk about it after. Absolutely. I think we should like talk about it after that would be that yeah, that would be absolutely awesome and i think uh a lot of people would enjoy that yeah well that was a lot <laughs> that was, that was a, a lot. lot of stuff to talk about and and yeah. that's that's only half of it did you guys know that we recorded over an hour and you're only watching about 30 minutes of it because the other 30. half of this conversation is over on nick's channel so i insist that you go on over to his channel <laughs> there's a link in the description below give him a sub give his video some of your watch time give it a like give him comments show him the the full power of love and positivity of the srg community Ooh. that i know you guys are capable of he's been super awesome the scheduling was a nightmare he's a very busy person but i'm so grateful that i was able to have you on this video with me because you're i was a glad to have expert. you as well a lot of fun <laughs> i yeah i would not say i'm an expert but i try my best thank you so much for having me Bri. it was a lot of fun absolutely you guys will love his content i know you will um plus here an awesome dude so <laughs> that's Props on definitely that. debatable that's debatable but you know <laughs> no no it's all good so this is super <laughs> fun i really enjoyed it i hope you guys too, did too uh with everything that we talked about which was a lot i have got to know your opinion i insist that you leave me a comment do not leave this video without leaving me a comment tell me what you agree with what you disagree with what you think we're gonna see at psx Please tell me everything. I'm so excited to talk with you guys and respond to comments. I read every single one, and I really, really, really am interested about this topic. I hope you can tell that we are both so passionate about this game, and I know you guys are too. So let's talk about it some more. As much as we've talked it, I feel like to death, I know there's more. So leave it in the comments. 
Thank you guys so much for watching. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Share it with all your friends so they can enjoy it too. And of course, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell for Strange Rebel Gaming so you don't miss the next video. And of course, subscribe to Nick's channel as well. Don't forget that. That's all. I love all you right. guys. See Bye. you later, everyone.